Good evening, my fellow exorcists, and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Now, yes, I get it, I probably look like crap in this video right now. Uh, it's not really my fault, uh, I've been a bit sick for the past couple of days, and just haven't been feeling well. Uh, now, no, I don't have the coronavirus for anyone that's probably thinking that or ready to ask that out of the gate. Personally, I think it's either the flu, which is natural for me because I'm uh, not one of those vaccina flu vaccination people that doesn't notice that it might kill me, it, or I know it could kill me if I take it, so it honestly, really, I think it's more uh, the changing of the seasons because every time when heat and cold switch over, or, or when winter changes to spring, it just, I get a bit sick, and it's understandable because sometimes, like, the human body can't handle the temperature change. So, yeah, I think it's just my body regulating to the temperature since I'm not used, despite being almost 21 in a, on April 16th, uh, and being born in spring, I'm not used to the cold and the heat. But anyway, tonight we will be taking a look at Star Wars Red Harvest. The era of the Old Republic is dark and dangerous time, as Jedi Knights valiantly battled the Sith Lords and their ruthless armies. But the Sith have disturbing plans, and none more so than the fulfillment of Dark Scabrous. Says fanatical dream, which is about to become nightmarish reality. Unlike those other Jedi sidelined to the agricultural, agricultural corpse, young Jedi whose abilities have not proven up to snuff, Pestizo Trace possesses one extraordinary force talent, a gift with plants. So yeah, basically she's poison ivy, <laughs> except worse. Suddenly, her quiet, ex her quiet existence among greenhouse and garden specimens is violently destroyed by the arrival of an emissary from Darth Scabrous. <clears throat> For the rare black orchid that she has nurtured and bonded with is the final ingredient in an ancient Sith formula that promises to grant Darth Scabrous his greatest desire. But at the heart of the formula is a never-before-seen virus. That's worse than fatal. It doesn't just kill. It transforms. Now the rotting, ravenous dead are rising, driven by bloodthirsty hunger for all things living, and commanded by a Sith Master with an insatiable lust for power, and the ultimate prize, immortality, no matter the cost. Now before we move on to my opinion, I'd like to just announce that this video is sponsored by Animal. Go buy yourself some amazing low-priced anime merch, including cute figurines to brighten up your collection. And every time you use the code FILM, you'll get 5% off your purchases, and you'll be helping the channel out. Okay, I don't know if I should hate or like this book, because while I do love zombie movies, this one is an interesting mess. During its first half, it decides to introduce all these useless characters that seem more like meat bags than actual characters because we rarely spend any time with them other than Darth Scabrous, Estizo Trace, and Tuluk. The rest either die not too long after we meet them or they're just so annoying that I ignored their existence and the worst case for these two would be Estizo's brother Rojo Trace and Lusk. Especially Rojo. Because I mean, that taken care of the Taken uh, reference was terrible. I mean, I don't know if this book came out around the Taken movies, but it, you had to go with the easiest freaking quote at, from that movie. I mean, th that scene alone was just so cheesy, and it shouldn't have been in this book. I'm sorry. It, I don't know who you are, or what you want, but I have a certain special 
set of skills. I don't. I haven't seen the movies, but so put her down now. And I love how he thinks that that's actually gonna work because Tulik couldn't hear him, and it's obvious in that scene, and it's just it's out of place and it's stupid as hell. Now the zombies, on the other hand, are pretty awesome. Unlike Romero zombies. These don't die if you decapitate them, or cut any of their limbs off. No, to kill them, you have to destroy the whole body, because these zombies were created by a special Sith magic that keeps them alive. The, op the only problem with them is the really annoying cries that they let out to signal to their fellow zombies, because it's so shrill, but other than that, they are awesome. Especially since they're actually being controlled by one being known as the Sickness. I just wish we focused more on them instead of the main cast, because the zombies are definitely my favorite part of the book. I was also a bit surprised to learn that this book was actually the prequel to Death Troopers, the first book to ever feature zombies in the Star Wars galaxy. Honestly, I really hope that we get to we get that again in canon because I don't know. Zombies were awesome. I mean, they did it in the Clone Wars, but we didn't get much from the zombie aspect. They were just more like brain-dead uh, Geonosians, but that's it. But honestly, I really hope that we get to uh, Dark Troopers sooner than later, because from what I've heard, it's a really good book, and... I'm hoping it's way better than this book. Oh, and honestly, I really hate the librarian in this book, because of how annoying and whiny he sounds, while also being completely useless, on the other hand. On the other hand, we have this book's HK unit, who oddly enough, thought it was a protocol droid, just because of a, just because of a restraining bolt. Now that's funny. And really, if it wasn't for him, they might not have found a way to stop all the zombies, and he is this story's badass next to Tulik. I also really hate this story's really slow pacing, to the point that I got annoyed just seeing the 46 different chapters. I mean, I know I said that a story's chapters should be spread out, and not clumped together, but this is a little too much, and... At least Deceived knew how to focus on one group of characters and no more than that. The story plays out the villain trying to find immortality while causing another problem and ultimately creating his own demise in the process, which has been way overdone. On top of them introducing multiple students and only focusing on a handful on top of the villain and the heroes, which shows that the writer didn't really know how he wanted to structure his story. Now don't get me wrong, it was a good zombie story, but not that good of a Star Wars story. Now this sadly brings me to the verdict of 5 out of 10, for all the mistakes the writer made while also creating a somewhat interesting take on the zombie genre. So yeah, if you're really into zombies and cheesy characters, I would say give it a shot, but if you're like me and you want a great story on top of that, I'd say you might want to give it a C give its sequel a try instead of just going a try instead of just you know what just go watch day of the dead or night of the living dead they're a whole lot better than these and despite whatever time they came out they were a whole lot more interesting and a whole lot better i mean the remakes were awesome the originals were a whole lot better Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the, no click the little notification bell for me to see more of our content, and may the force be with you always.